G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another edition of Just The Tips. The first one in Macclesfield in England. Doing a fair bit of jet setting at the moment. I was in America last week. The last four weeks of videos have been in America. And now for the foreseeable future, they're gonna be in England. I am traveling to Greece this week, but probably not gonna record any videos there. So for now, it's just me and my weird mustache doing another edition of Just The Tips for round nine. Back by popular demand, I'm going to reuse the Squiggle website because a few people said in the comments that they do prefer that. To be honest, whether I do it, it kind of depends on how comfortable it is for me to record with a computer right next to me. But now I'm in Macclesfield, it appears it is very easy for me to do that. So enough waffling, let's talk about round nine. Oh, actually one more piece of waffle. If you do me a favor and check out our game day squad, link in the description. If you like your fantasy sports, or even if you don't necessarily, game day squad is a really, really cool new fun game that I've been playing. As you can see, I do a weekly video on it and in the description you can find a link to join the true footy league even if you don't know much about it it's not one of those things that you have to start at the start of the season to be in with the chance to win something it's a really cool game so just check out the link in the description all right so let's crack into round nine and it starts off with uh what is traditionally a really big clash between richmond and geelong two traditionally strong sides over the last 10 years or so as you can see on the ladder we've got sixth versus 15th Obviously, I've just made a video on how uh, Richmond's kind of struggling a little bit this year. I mean, obviously, they just beat West Coast last week. It was a game where West Coast kind of kept pace for, say, two and a half quarters, and then the top-end quality of Richmond uh, really st stood up and got a hold of them. But it doesn't really give me a lot of confidence that they can match it with some better teams. Their form this year has been indifferent. Before they beat West Coast, they lost to the, uh, the Suns by four goals at Marvel Stadium. So, by contrast, Geelong seems to be trudging along okay they've just beaten the crows at home they haven't really given us too much reason to doubt them since about round three and therefore i'll be shocked if this isn't a big geelong win to be honest richmond have the capacity i feel to make this a closer game but as the season wears on and less uh confident i am in richmond because the form hasn't been great for a number of uh, well, months now so i'm going to say geelong win this game by 55 points. Then we've got West Coast versus Gold Coast, the Battle of the Coasts. And in theory, this is West Coast's most winnable game for a while now, when you consider the difficulty of the fixture. Uh, we played and played Carlton, uh, Richmond last week, but Melbourne and Geelong prior to that, Port Adelaide and Fremantle. So a lot of those teams made finals last year. In theory, this was on paper, the one we were gonna have a chance at winning. But as we're now sitting here actually looking at it, and the Gold Coast Suns have come off a pretty good three weeks. They had two wins last week going down narrowly against uh, Melbourne, sorry. That was a really, really good game, and Gold Coast matched it with them for four quarters. By contrast, I think West Coast are dipping with their competitiveness. The injuries have kind of stabilized a little bit, so there's only one or two a week. We can live with that. But regardless of injuries, I think the, the golfing quality of these two sides at the moment is, is obvious. And we could see a West Coast bob up like they did in round two against GWS. That version of West Coast could win this game, but I don't think they have what it takes to really match it, particularly in the midfield with the form that Noah Anderson is in. So Gold Coast should win this by 30 points. Sydney versus Fremantle is uh, an interesting one. Again, two finalists from last year who have started the year poorly at three and five. Uh, Sydney last week were uh, sort of amicable against, uh, is that the right word? Amicable? That's not the right word. But they were reasonable in their performance against Collingwood, uh, where it was evenly matched sort of for three quarters, at least from a scoring point of view, and then got done. So it's hard to really blame them for that. Collingwood are probably the benchmark of the competition. Fremantle, conversely, played Hawthorne, who sit right at the bottom of the ladder. Uh, and they trounced them by something like 10 goals in the end. So both teams with uh, plenty to prove and um, are desperately trying to claw back their way into this season. It's interesting actually to see that they're only 4% apart because I don't know about you guys, but I feel a lot more confident that Sydney can rescue their season than I do with Fremantle with all due respect to them. This could be a good game. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how C uh, Fremantle go at the SCG. I think they go okay. That being said, surely Sydney pull their finger out. I think they lost like four of their last five. But they'll win this game. They should do by, yeah, call it 20 points. Now, we've got North Melbourne hosting Port at Bell Reeve. This one is a little interesting because uh, North Melbourne are a tricky prospect uh, down in Hobart historically. But their form has been quite poor lately. Uh, I said in my other video, their last three scores, admittedly one against St Kilda, was 54, 49, and 34. So we've seen a massive drop off in form from them since the opening fortnight of the season. It's probably just a young side getting fatigued, um, amongst other things as well. But Port Adelaide, by contrast, is sitting at six and two. That is a very good record. Um, after three rounds, they were one and two. We were 
had the question marks rightfully so, but they've got their shit together and they held up against a uh, pretty resilient Essendon side last week in Adelaide. So I, the Belbury factor does make this a little bit interesting, but you'd be a very, very brave man to not tip Port Adelaide here. Upset potential, for sure. But I think on current form, Port Adelaide should be at least 27 points too good. Hawthorne versus Melbourne at the G, hey? Uh, Hawthorne, it seems like they've had a a good three weeks there where they were competitive, had some close losses against Adelaide and GWS, uh, and then sort of after a promising start sort of against Fremantle, in fact, that's probably being generous, they got absolutely run over and I think again it's probably a a young side that is playing well at times but can't sustain it um, has a game where they get completely run over Melbourne would be interesting this week they could be fatigued because that game against the Gold Coast Suns went all the way to the last 14 seconds before it was decided and the players looked physically cooked after that they were really challenged by a decent side in Gold Coast so is there a potential for Melbourne to come out flat in this game yes but they'd have to be supremely flat to lose to Hawthorne I think Um, It is possible, but I'm going to say Melbourne should win this by six goals. Oh, we've got a really good game here, I reckon, potentially, between Brisbane and Essendon. When you consider the form that Essendon has been in this year, they sit four and four, but I think their form this year has actually been better than that would suggest with a uh, tough loss last week against Port Adelaide. Uh, five points uh, was the margin in the end and the defense held up really well Port Adelaide had an avalanche of inside 50s and couldn't quite get through that Essendon last line of defense as well so on the whole though they've had some pretty good form obviously they beat Melbourne once as well so you've got to give them a slight chance in this game but from memory I've got a feeling that Essendon don't do too well at the Gabba let's actually have a look I stand corrected they won their last game there at the Gabba but I do seem to recall that might have been COVID influence where Brisbane lost a whole stack of players um, their previous one to that was a pretty big win by Brisbane by 57 points there last time they won at the Gabba was 2018 so that's actually not too bad a record okay Brisbane have just come off a five goal win against Carlton they outclassed them just proved that they were a better side this is going to be a really tough opponent for Essendon this is two tough away games in a row so I kind of feel for them a little bit and it might deflate their ladder position because I think they'll lose this game but it would be it could be 18 points yeah I can see Essendon putting up a fight to make this a good game all throughout then we've got Carlton and the Bulldogs seventh versus eighth pretty evenly matched uh, in the sense that the Bulldogs have two extra points but Carlton have a better percentage, largely thanks to that huge win over West Coast, probably. Carlton have been disappointing at times this year, and other times looked really, really exciting. Obviously, they had a bit of a downhill ski performance against the Eagles, um, with all due respect. I think it's just that their forward line is so strong that when their midfield is getting on top, as they did against West Coast, they're capable of putting large scores on the scoreboard. So it's not too much of a criticism, but I'm sure there's a lot of disappointment at the way they sort of rolled over in that third quarter against Brisbane. The Bulldogs have been pretty solid. I think they've won five of their last six. They beat GWS at Monaco on the weekend in tough, wet conditions. They haven't really put a foot wrong for a little while now. And I'm a lot more confident about the Bulldogs. So Carlton could win this game, but out of the two, who do I trust more right now? I'm going to say the Bulldogs. So they'll win this game by... 24 points. Then we've got Adelaide versus St Kilda at Adelaide Oval. This could potentially be a very good game where Adelaide are a very strong home side at the moment and uh, in front of their home crowd, they lift to another gear. They were reasonable against Geelong going down by 26 points. I think if you offered that to a team that hasn't won at GMHBA for 20 years, at the start of the game, You'd probably accept it, as a fan anyway, not the actual team. St Kilda got back on the winner's list with a win over North Melbourne. It was a pretty dour Uh, not entertaining game where, you know, something like 12 goals, 26 was kicked, but that is what St Kilda do best. They strangle the opposition. Wasn't their best day, but they've been a good side this year. And that percentage of 137 uh, speaks to that as well. So St Kilda are a stronger side than Adelaide here, but Adelaide do have this ability to lift for the home crowd against a good opponent, which is why I'm excited for this game. I will still tip Saints. I will still tip the Saints. They'll win this game by nine points, but I'm hoping for some fireworks. Then we've got Collingwood and the Giants at the MCG. This one should be straightforward. Uh, the Giants have been plucky in, in some defeats this year. They're 3-5. and five. They sit 14th on my live ladder right now. Gallant in some of their defeats this year, most recently against the Bulldogs. Uh, again, dour conditions. Lost Toby Green going into that game and still uh, you know, put up a pretty good fight back. I think they were down like 72 or 39 at three-quarter time. Then came back and, and, and were competitive, and I think that's all that Adam Kingsley can really ask for at the moment with a list that has 
seen a lot of the challenges through the number of years there with players leaving and stuff like that. So not to get too deep about it, I don't know why I went there, but GWS, uh, I, I, it's hard to imagine them getting belted in this game, but I really can't imagine them beating Collingwood. Collingwood, obviously, uh, just having beaten Sydney by five goals, surely I'll tip the pies by a good 41 points here. So there you go. That is my round of nine tips, guys, as we look at the ladder. Uh, Port Adelaide versus Melbourne next week. That will be very, very interesting. Not a lot of change from the ladder uh, after this week's round of tips. I think Port Adelaide might move up to fifth there. And uh, I think most of the top eight is... In fact, I think that is exactly the same top eight. Adelaide and Essendon, a little bit unlucky to uh, be outside of the eight on their form, particularly Essendon. I think they've had a couple of tough fixtures in a row, um, but I could definitely see them leapfrogging Carlton sometime soon. Sydney stay in 11th despite that result. I think Gold Coast might just leapfrog Fremantle this round, but for the most part, the ladder will stay the same this week if I get my predictions right. I feel like we've got 11 teams that could realistically make finals. I'd probably cut it off at Sydney right now, what I'm looking at. I don't think Gold Coast or Fremantle are really good chances, with all due respect. But if Fremantle beats Sydney, maybe I'll change my tune on that and uh, we've probably got three teams realistically vying for the spoon down here with north west coast and hawthorne it is hard to imagine west coast not winning it but we'll see fingers crossed anyway guys that is my tips and predictions let me know in the comments what you agree with what you disagree with uh, and what's your upset of the round i could see north and port being a weird upset but only because I think North have that ability to, to bob up and play well, not because I uh, don't rate Port Adelaide. As always, guys, really appreciate your support. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.